Welcome to Public Health Matters, the show that addresses public health issues that matter the most to the citizens of Harford County. Real issues, real people, and the information you need to know. Hello, I'm Rani Nassar, Public Information Officer for the Harford County Health Department and your host for today's Public Health Matters, the show that takes a closer look at the public health issues that matter the most to the citizens of Harford County. Today's topic for Public Health Matters is safe sleep. We will be discussing this topic in order to raise awareness about sleep-related infant deaths and identify best practices when it comes to putting your baby to sleep. Joining us today is Jennifer Thomas, Senior Clinical Nurse at the University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health, and Dr. Paul Lamonico, Local Pediatrician and Chair of Harford County Child Fatality Review Team. Welcome to our show and thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having us. Great, this is such an important topic to, to discuss today and I um, really appreciate you both being here. If you can both take a minute to introduce yourself and just explain what your connection to safe sleep is. Dr. Lamonica, if you go first. Um, Dr. Lamonica, I've been practicing in the area for since uh, 1990 <laughs> and uh, obviously uh, the very important topic, requirements and recommendations for this has been um, ongoing and it's certainly changed over the years since my uh, introduction to the area. Um, I'm also chair of the Child Fatality Review and we, uh, we tend to uh, uh, study a lot of uh, these instances of, uh, of child fatality because of sleep related instance, instances. Thank you. Jennifer Thomas. I have been a neonatal nurse for 20 years um, and I actually have two children of my own as well um, and as a neonatal nurse safe sleep is a huge part of um, what I teach every day to our parents and um, my job really is to make sure that every family has all the tools they need so that their baby is always safe at home. Great. Thank you so much for all the work you guys do here in Harford County. Um, can you just explain why this important is, uh, why this topic is important and you know, why are we here to bring awareness to it? <laughs> so uh, this is one of the things that we consider um, in our power to change. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse to families than to have a newborn child or an infant that you have spent the last nine months sort of gearing up for mm -hmm. and the family gearing up and to have that child um, pass away or go through one of these events with, uh, and, and there's no explanation. Mm -hmm. it, it's one thing if a child is very sick and, and people can accept that, mm -hmm. but this is an instance where, you know, there's no explanation. Yeah. Or, and so what we want to try to do is explain the modifying factors that may reduce this, reduce this risk. Exactly. There's so many things with newborns and children. There's things we can't control. Mm -hmm. And since this is one of the things that we can try and do better, we want to make sure that families do all the right things. According to the CDC, there are about 3,500 sleep-related deaths among U.S. babies each year. Why is this number so high? And what are some of the risk factors for sleep-related deaths? Babies are very vulnerable, especially when in those first couple of months of life. Um, you know, they can't move, they can't really roll over yet, they can't get away from anything that's dangerous, and they also can't tell a caregiver when something is wrong or something is bothering them. So they're at high, higher risk for safety issues in general. Um, and some of the risks that um, can add to that are babies who sleep on their bellies, mm -hmm. babies that are born very young, so premature, um, babies that are born lower birth weight, um, babies that are born to parents who smoke or use any kind of recreational substances, um, and even baby boys are at a higher risk for, oh. for SIDS, just in general. The, the numbers that to quote are rather significant when mm -hmm. you're talking about the United States. Um, this is not just the United States issue though, this is worldwide. Um, interestingly, those, that number was a lot more, and then when the, when the programs to educate people on safe sleep took into account the, all of that, mm -hmm. we did start to see that drop. Um, what is uh, 
most concerning though is it's sort of reached this point mm -hmm. and we haven't really seen it changing a lot since there so we have certainly a a group that uh, we're, we seem to have plateaued in trying to help that number out and as uh, Jen had said you know a lot of these things we may be able to modify and maybe mm -hmm. we're just not doing a good enough job modifying those risks um, certainly one of those risks is sleeping on the belly mm -hmm. and uh, you know not to age myself but uh, <laughs> but prior to the uh, the 90s it was uh, it was a given that everybody slept on their belly mm -hmm. and that was because the feeling was oh my baby's going to vomit or they're going to spit up and then mm -hmm. they're going to they're going to get into trouble there and what we found is uh, when when the studies were done and and not just in this country, but across the world, that many of, uh, many of the, the studies show that indeed sleeping on the back truly, uh, truly decreases the number of these episodes. And then as Jen has mentioned, there's a lot of other risk factors that, mm -hmm. that are somewhat in our power to control, smoking, and, and again, uh, even uh, care that you're doing prior to the baby being born. Mm. It is essential that moms get uh, good prenatal care, that they're seeing somebody, because a lot of these things after the baby's born have been set in motion already. So can't stress enough that um, you know, we want to try to keep a lot of these risk factors to a minimum. Can you both talk a little bit about some tips for parents and caregivers in respect to the proper way to put your baby to sleep? So I know you mentioned putting the baby on the back, but what are some other tips that uh, we can provide to parents? So the easiest thing I think to remember is A, B, C. <laughs> always on their back, always alone in their room, always on their back and in their own crib. Mm -hmm. So preferably we have babies sleep in the room with their parents or caregiver but not in the same bed. Mm -hmm. So a crib somewhere in that room. Um, and then always on their back, no matter if it's a nap, if it's bedtime, mm -hmm. and then always alone. So no fluffy blankets, no toys, no bumpers, no um, little things that incline them. There really shouldn't be anything in the bed, just that tight fitted sheet. Um, and I think a lot of it is kind of trying to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. So um, are we going to grandma's today? Is there a safe space for baby to sleep at grandma's? Uh, when baby goes to daycare, is there a safe space for baby there? So it's just kind of thinking about all those things so that no matter where you are or what time of day it is, that you've already kind of thought about that and taken the guesswork out and baby's always gonna be sleeping safely. And just to reiterate what uh, Jen is saying, the, the key here is on the back mm -hmm. and it should be a, a an approved crib or bassinet because there's a lot uh, that you can buy that are really not approved. Mm -hmm. The mattress uh, should be well fitting. It shouldn't be like, oh, I'm using the mattress from um, Aunt Sally, whose uh, <laughs> whose youngest is 28 years old. Um, and the, the the sheet should be firm. Mm -hmm. um, we shouldn't be putting blankets. Uh, and the other thing to dovetail on this is when we have siblings that are trying to be helpful they will take their stuffed animals and they will mm -hmm. put them in the crib or the bassinet because they're being good mm -hmm. and that's a potential problem mm -hmm. so really no stuffed animals nothing like that there um, that uh, that could get in the way um, the big thing some I've been seeing a lot of people come in is these weighted blankets for newborns and all no weighted blankets. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to wow. be getting into that. They, they, they do have some issues. And yeah, you'll see some of this stuff advertised on the internet. Oh, this is good for your sleeping baby. Really be very careful about mm -hmm. that. Okay, but probably the simplest thing you can remember is what Jen reiterated was the ABCs. Stay on that back. Mm -hmm. um, we, want to, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the crib space is fine and we want to make sure that, the, uh, that we're, we're not bringing that baby into bed, that they should be sleeping in, uh, in that bed. And, and that just not goes for sleeping mm -hmm. at night, it also goes for, uh, for sleeping during the day. So very common for parents to, to take the baby and say, oh, we're taking a nap now, I'm mm -hmm. going to put him on the couch. Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to put him on the couch, okay? Worst case scenario, I'll tell people, look, if you need to, put the baby on the floor because that's flat. 
um, but we, we, we want to be careful with those things. How about um, you know sleeping in car seats or sleeping in other types of like those devices? I know they have like the swings and things like that. Um, how about those items? Would you recommend those? Not recommend so we've them? We've all been, anybody that's had children, mm -hmm. we know the fast the fastest way to get that child to sleep is riding them around in a car. <laughs> probably not the best thing, but of course we have to keep the child safe. But mm -hmm. probably not a good idea to let them sleep in a car seat uh, mm -hmm. in general. Now, if you're driving in a car and they fall asleep, well, you're not going to stop the car, mm -hmm. but uh, you should make sure that their head and neck is sort of firmly propped up and they should be, shouldn't be hanging over like that. Mm -hmm. That's always a, a good thing. But, uh, and when babies are strapped into their car seat in the mm -hmm. car, that car seat is made to keep them at that right, correct angle okay. so that they do kind of lean back a little bit more. But once you take that carrier out of the car and sit it on the ground or hopefully not, but sometimes the table or wherever people sit them, um, it puts the baby at a different angle and they're more likely to get into a compromising situation. So the safest thing is, is if the baby falls asleep in that car seat, once you get to wherever you're going, take the baby out and either hold them or put them in their safe sleep space. So that's why we're kind of stressing again, putting them on their back, especially how it helps the baby breathing and things like that. So it's very important, thank you. Um, should parents be concerned about their baby getting cold at night? Um, any blankets? If they if they don't have any blankets, are they going to think, oh, well, you know, it's, it's I feel cold, so maybe I should put blankets on my baby because I think it's going to be cold. And you know, what should they what should their um, babies be wearing when they're sleeping so that they're not worried about the baby being cold or being too hot or things like that? Babies actually sleep better if they're not in a hot environment, even though. I think we all think, oh, the baby needs to be warm and toasty. Mm -hmm. um, they actually sleep better if they're not hot, if they're in okay. a little bit cooler environment. So typically whatever we're wearing, plus maybe a onesie. Okay. So you can add just one little extra layer. And they do make one piece sleepers mm -hmm. and one piece sleep sacks that are safe for sleeping. So if it's colder in your house or you live in a colder climate or it's those really cold months here in Hartford mm -hmm. County that sometimes get really, really cold, um, you can always do um, something like that, like those one-piece sleepers just to keep them cozy. Um, but keeping it too hot in the room actually can be detrimental. The baby, one, won't sleep as well. Mm -hmm. And we all you know, know babies waking up in the middle of the night is not what parents want. <laughs> yeah. um, but also it can be a higher risk for SIDS if they do get overheated. Yes, yeah, so just, just to go back to, I'm not in the hospital that much, but <laughs> the babies in the in incubators, mm -hmm. the, especially our premature in incubators, uh, they can get quite warm. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of those families come back and say, oh, we got to keep the babies warm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're not released from the hospital unless you can maintain your temperature. Mm -hmm. So again, once you get home, uh, you want to keep I always tell people it's probably better to keep the house on a little bit on the cooler side. Mm -hmm. Dad's like that, the mm -hmm. mom's not so much, <laughs> but uh, the babies tend to take care of themselves and they're getting too cold, they'll let you know. Okay. And nowadays the sleeping sacks and all are a beautiful mm -hmm. um, innovation. Before you always worried about putting too many blankets on the baby and things like that, but they, uh, it's better to, to layer a baby in several different outfits than to, to struggle with putting blankets over them and things like that. Yeah, I mean the innovations they have now for babies is unreal. I think even like the monitors can tell you the the temperature and the oxygen level and I mean it's it's crazy how um, amazing technology has brought us this far today and now um, we have all these uh, really great tools to help you know take care of our kids. What does a safe and a healthy nursery look like in home? And what are some safety items that you think should be included in um, a nursery or in a, a baby's room? I think a safe nursery doesn't have to be a boring nursery. I know sometimes <laughs> when we look at pictures of uh, safe sleep infographics and um, things like that, it, it's the baby all alone in the crib and you think, oh, that doesn't look very cute. <laughs> But you can make the rest of the room adorable. You know, you can still have cute wall hangings and you can still have fluffy blankets when you're holding baby and you're awake and alert and you can still use those for those holding times. And you can still have toys and stuffed animals, mm -hmm. you know, for when baby's doing tummy time or when you're playing with baby. They just shouldn't be in this area where the baby sleeps. So there's still plenty of room to decorate, plenty of room to do cute and adorable things and take adorable <laughs> pictures with yeah. your baby. 
just making sure that where we put them down to sleep is is safe and um, that that crib isn't close to any cords from blinds or if you are if you do have the crib in the room with the parent that that crib isn't so close to the parent's bed that parent bedding can fall into the crib mm -hmm. so we just want to make sure that wherever that crib is nothing's in it or around it that could fall into it or baby could pull in those bigger babies will you know they'll grab on anything and pull it in the bed with them so just always making sure baby's alone in that crib yeah the uh, the room you don't have to be bland yeah. um, and ba in fact babies prefer pastel colors and, and softer colors and it actually relaxes them mm -hmm. now at two o'clock in the morning they're not seeing too much of their walls but, uh, <laughs> but those type of things and I encourage people to use paintings or pictures with vibrant colors because again that attracts the babies mm. um, so that sort of helps and some people like to do the little mobiles and all I just tell people be careful of that make mm. sure it doesn't hang down too long um, again the big thing about a, a nursery is the bassinet or the crib as we've said needs to be appropriate um, straight, uh, straight flat, uh, flat uh, mattresses and sheets and nothing in there. But um, uh, other little things that, uh, that I sort of recommend. Number one, the crib. I've never been a big fan of changing tables mm -hmm. because, and, and I know lots of people like them because they're a little higher up and they can, they can work it. But I've had so many numerous cases where the children accidentally fall off and it, it, it's nobody's fault. It's mom turns around to grab something and the baby's down. Mm -hmm. So if you do use those, you gotta make sure they're appropriate and they have straps to them. Okay. Um, but I usually tell families, get the cribs, and I think you can get cribs now that they're all the same, that the, the mattress level goes up. Okay. So if you're doing anything in the crib, you're not necessarily bending all the way down. You're, the crib mattress comes up. And then as the child gets older, you keep lowering that mattress. So that's important when you're looking for cribs and, and designs uh, of cribs. And the bassinets, uh, uh, generally parents can move in and out of those. I always tell people, when you start to see the child's head lifting above the side, it's time to get out of the bassinet. Um, but actually, if they're starting to make a move to roll on their side and all, then you, you probably have to get that baby out of that bassinet. And then it, it can't hurt to, uh, I always like rocking chairs or some comfortable chair for the mother or whoever's watching the baby to be able to sit in there and hold the baby and either feed them or comfort them. Um, it's, it's important and you do spend a lot of time in that room more than you think. Mm -hmm. um, of course, well-meaning families don't want to make, wake up the spouse and all so they, they sort of walk out but if the child has a room dedicated to them, uh, having a comfortable chair or a rocking chair. Rocking chairs are great because they move. Yeah. And <laughs> children like that moving. Yes. And nobody at 2 o'clock in the morning wants to be pacing the floor. So that helps too. That's great. That's really, I mean, so much, so many uh, items and things like that you really need to think about when you are setting up a room. And I'm sure that could be a lot of stress for a lot of parents. So I think those tips were really helpful. Uh, so according to HealthyChildren.org, the risk of sleep-related infant death is up to 67 times higher when infants sleep with someone on a couch, soft armchair, or cushion. So why is this? Is it because the same thing we talked about, they're not on their backs? Um, if we can just kind of touch on this again. I think it's definitely, it's some of the things we've already talked about, mm -hmm. but those type of things, they're made to be comfy. You know, you want yeah. that nice soft chair to sit in while you're watching TV. They're, they're soft, they're cushy. Um, it also makes it really easy for a very tired parent or caregiver to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're exhausted, you've been up all night, and you go, to, you just sit down for a minute to feed that baby, and it's very easy just to fall right asleep. And it's very easy for that little tiny baby just to slide and get into, an in, into a compromising position. Um, and not be able to alert the caregiver mm -hmm. to get out of that position. Um, so like Dr. LaMonica was saying, having a chair by right where you're feeding mm -hmm. or, so that you can lay the baby right down in the crib. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that way if, if downstairs is where you spend most of your day, you know, have a safe sleep area downstairs so that as soon as you're done feeding, you know you're gonna be tired, you can safely put the baby right in that crib when you're done. Um, or if you start to feel like you're getting tired, stand up and walk around while you're feeding the baby. Because mm -hmm. um, we all know it, uh, new parents, it's, it's exhausting. And once you sit down in that comfy chair, it's so easy to fall asleep. Yeah. 
Again, um, I think Jen sort of said everything here. Yeah, <laughs> but basically, you fall asleep with the baby, mm -hmm. okay? And, and even the best babies, they're where you're at. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, you, you find that I'm only getting two hours of sleep. And then I got my other children I gotta care for and I can't really take a nap when the baby's taking a nap. And, and so you, you, you run out of gas. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of uh, the issue. And, and families a lot of times say, well, I'm not gonna fall asleep with them in my arms. I'm gonna put him here on the side by the couch. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the same type of thing. It's an area that the baby can get trapped in. And babies just don't have enough head strength to, to move out of that. So if they're mm -hmm. starting to have difficulty breathing, they can't necessarily move out of that position. So the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends breastfeeding, if possible, when it comes to safe sleep. So how are those two related? So, <laughs> and I, I'm not gonna get into a conflict here, yeah. <laughs> because there's breastfeeding proponents that mm -hmm. will say this, but breastfeeding basically helps the baby mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. Number one, as we all know, you get immunoglobulins from, from mom and it sort of gives the baby a better, uh, a better start mm -hmm. as far as infections and things like that. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, you're taking some of the risk factors that may set up the baby for, for some sudden infant death problems as mm -hmm. in infections. But the other thing is um, breastfeeding sort of allows the mom to be aware of the child. Mm -hmm. um, for most breastfeeding infants, they aren't gonna be sleeping through the night for a while because breast milk is made for that baby. They digest it very quickly. It goes mm -hmm. through their system. So unfortunately, they're waking a lot to feed. Yeah. And there's certainly this feeling that, well, I'm breastfeeding the baby and I'm checking, what, whether you know it or not, yeah. you're checking that baby, okay? Mm -hmm. And I get all the time, oh my goodness, I fell asleep and the baby slept for three hours and that never happens. <laughs> well, it's okay if that happens, but again, your body gets into a rhythm where you're seeing the baby, mm -hmm. you're re reacting to the baby, and the, uh, the baby sort of continues to build up that, uh, that awareness of mom. The, the biggest problem though is, is a practical problem is most breastfeeding moms are beat also, and so when you're feeding, you have a tendency to fall asleep and so does the baby. Mm -hmm. Especially if the baby's one of these snack, 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 a little bit, fall yeah. asleep, and then five minutes later, snack, 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 a little bit. So all of those things come into, uh, come into play here, but it is one of the things that when you look at these big studies, we notice that breastfeeding tends to be one of those factors that you have an increase or a decrease in SIDS-related accidents when the babies are breastfeeding. Interesting. So what can we as a local health department do to help reduce the number of sleep-related infant deaths overall in Hartford County? I think just making sure we get this message out and not just to moms and dads. So obviously when our um, families come in to have a newborn baby, we're talking about safe sleep and we're reviewing safe sleep with them, but it's for everyone else too. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully our families have lots of support and friends and family and everyone's helping them and we want to make sure that those people get the message too. So you know, aunts, uncles, friends, neighbors, caregivers, the daycare families, so that everyone understands how important always putting the baby safely to sleep is, so that that way they can support the parents, mm -hmm. um, and also if the baby is cared for by anyone besides the parents, that the baby is sleeping safely every time. Education, education, mm -hmm. education. I mean, that's why we're here today, mm -hmm. is yeah. to bring awareness to this. Um, certainly, the, nur the, the hospital nurseries and all, put, uh, they put uh, videos out about this, they give the parents information. Um, when the babies certainly come into to the office to see the docs, again, it's being re reiterated about sleep. That's a big deal. Sleep and feeding are a big deal in that first month to two months of life. So the more you can sort of hone in on it, the better. And certainly you have the aspect of well, grandma says we're going to do this, and, mm -hmm. and and I never disagree with grandma, <laughs> but I try to sort of make it a point that well, this is the safest we've got. This mm -hmm. is what will help reduce the the issues. So some of this is cultural and mm -hmm. sort of 
you don't want to break cultures and the way people think, but you do want to advise people this is the safest thing we have for babies. Great. Before we go, is there anything else you'd like to add about safe sleep? Um, I think I would just like to say that um, we know parenting is hard mm -hmm. and we know that having a newborn that makes you so sleepy. So not trying to do everything yourself. If someone offers help, take that help so that you can take care of yourself, so that you can be the best for your baby when your baby needs you. Great. Yes, never refuse help, yeah. as Jenna <laughs> says, okay. That's why we have families, so uh, always, uh, always accept help as best you can. And, and again, for the people that have had children, bring it up to other mothers because that's the best teachers is mm -hmm. other families. They've been through this before. They know what it's like to, to go sleepless. And, uh, and a lot of times, a lot of their tips will help. Thank you so much both. I appreciate everything that um, you both do in the Harford County to help with um, you know, promoting safe sleep. So thank you both so much. And that's all we have time for today. I'd like to thank my guests on today's show Jennifer Thomas and Dr. LaMonico. And if you'd like more information on safe sleep, please refer to the resources page after the show. And join us next time for another important health issue that matters the most to the citizens of Hartford County. Thank you for watching. TV. Watch what matters.